Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to today's video. Uh, we're really excited to have you with us and um, to cover off a really important topic that we've been seeing, um, you know, sort of overtake a lot of our first time buyers, especially. Um, and today for our video, we are joined with Joe Bladick, who is a mortgage professional in the Barry Simcoe area, but serving all of Ontario. Really good to have you with us this morning, Joe, to chat about today's topic and cover off, you know, the buzz that it's kind of stirred. So thanks for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure, Sam. It's a really, like you're saying, a key topic right now. So just getting into this topic today, I hope we'll show a lot of folks exactly what conversations they need to have before applying for, you know, a mortgage and getting started. It's going to give them a lot of good topics to prep on, I think. And as, as well, just to share them, uh, share with them some normal information, what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Sam, uh, great to have you as well on the show. Sam Thompson uh, is a mortgage agent with Mega Mortgage. He's been with Mega Mortgage for over a year now, helping our first time home buyers, helping our clients that need refinancing, all that. And also he moved from Ottawa in uh, last year to Barrie and is married and lives in Barrie now with his wife, Grace. So glad to have you on as well, Sam. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction, Joe. Um, so let's just hop into it because today's topic, it's really been spurred on with all of the changes to the stress test. There's now, you know, some stricter requirements on all mortgages, whether it's insured or uninsured. And especially for, you know, prospective first time buyers that are in sort of the, the millennial age gap, you know, if you're like new into your career, you don't quite have the savings yet. Um, it's become way more predominant. And the article that I read very aptly um, names it the bank of mom and dad. Um, we're seeing a lot of need for the bank of mom and dad and a lot of first time buyers who are looking to get into the market and get that assistance in, you know, whether it's the form of a gifted down payment or just being on as a temporary co-signer as well. Absolutely. Yes. It's a conversation that many buyers don't like to have. But it's proving to be necessary because uh, we're finding a lot of buyers are coming into the process. They have great credit. They have great jobs. They have some savings, but it's just not quite where they need to be. And it's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's just, mm. it's just where the market is. Absolutely. And I think that's a, probably the best starting point for chatting about this today is just sort of addressing the normalcy of having a temporary co-signer. I mean, because we've seen prices, you know, skyrocket to, you know, incredibly high rates you know, and high increases over the last, you know, year since, since we've been seeing at the start of COVID how the housing markets responded. And it's really, you know, even like we're saying, a lot of buyers that we're working with they have minimal to very low debts. They have scores that are around the 700 range, which is really strong. And they have long-term salaried employment, but they just still can't get into the market. So they're really, um, I think going forward from this point, there really is gonna be a shift to having a more normal approach to adding a co-signer on. And we can even set it up to be just as a temporary co-signer and we can divide the title of the mortgage accordingly, right, Joe? That's right, yeah. So it doesn't, like Sam is saying, have to be a permanent thing. Usually a co-signer is only needed for the first few years of the mortgage. As the uh, income for that person goes up, the equity is going up as well as the mortgage pay payments are being made and the credit is also improving because the mortgage payments are being reported to the credit bureau. So those three mm -hmm. items all together help that person in a couple of years remove that co-signer. So it only ends up being for two or three years, which is not a big deal. It's not a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're a first time buyer and, you know, even if you've watched um, one of our webinars and seen all of the rebates, incentive grants that are all available to you, you can actually have um, your real estate lawyer set you up as the first time buyer on 99% of title and the co-signer just on 1%. So this also really helps you, you know, maximize the amount of those rebates and incentives that you're receiving rather than doing a traditional, you know, 50-50 sweat with a co-signer and only being able to receive half the benefits that are entitled to you. 
Yes, that's a good point. And I failed to answer that question. So that's right. And it is a different kind of way to register the mortgage. And mm -hmm. that is a great way, like you're saying, Sam, to keep the benefits assigned to you. That way you're getting uh, the, the max amount of first time home buyer benefits while having a co-signer. And it also helps with um, if the co-signer themselves is worried about any tax implications because they are only on for 1% ownership rather than 50% then the tax implications, if any, usually, you know, you need to talk to your accountant to make sure there's, there's none, but you, usually it's okay. But the tax implication, if any, would be very small with a 1% ownership stake. Yeah, and it's just, it's important to note as well, the different types of um, income that we can use for this co-signer, because we know, you know, even if you're applying as a first-time buyer or you need a co-signer, maybe your parents are a bit advanced in years and they're on a fixed income. We can actually use those amounts as well. And we do still see that, you know, having a pension income in the 20 to 30,000 range can really drastically improve what you qualify for. It's not just, you know, we need another $100,000 salary on the application for the mortgage, but we can use um, pension income as well to provide an, an additional benefit to what you qualify for. Yeah, the co-signer themselves does not have to have a very large income like you're saying, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, just to have that little bit additional, sometimes a small income of 30 to 40,000 can help that home buyer get to another 100 to 150,000 in extra mortgage money very easily. So like you're saying, as someone that's on CPP uh, and old age security, maybe the mm -hmm. mom and dad are on both of those little pensions, they can actually yeah. be quite a worthwhile addition to your mortgage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's definitely an important conversation to start um, if you're looking to get into the market as a first time buyer to assess, you know, sort of where any prospective co-signer, whether it's a parent, sort of where their employment is at, where it's coming from, as well as any debts that they owe. Because if they are going to be um, registered on title, we would need to use any maybe mortgages that they're currently paying off as well, um, as well as any liabilities from car loans or lines of credit that they have as well. So it's good to have an open conversation with them to see you know, if it would really improve your scenario and to see sort of the comfortability of whether they um, are willing and are able to help you out with that. Yes, exactly. Just to know where you qualify on your own versus with a co-signer mm -hmm. will give you some really unique perspective. And then uh, once you have that information, it can empower you then to make a decision on whether or not you would like to go ahead and try to find something on your own or really try to really get into the market with a co-signer. And, and sometimes a co-signer not only helps with their credit score and income right. that they're earning, but they also can contribute with some of their down payment. We've, we're seeing that a lot too, mm -hmm. Sam, with, the, with gifts coming from mom and dad. Absolutely, absolutely. So as it's becoming more common and each situation is very different, the best place to start is just by reaching into our office. We can run you through a really quick pre-qualification to see, you know, theoretically what you would qualify for and then look at any strategies moving forward, whether it is in your best benefit to add a co-signer or even if it's something simple like paying off a little more debt or, you know, using some, some incentives to help you qualify for more. So if you are at all interested in starting the process with a pre-qualification call, um, you know, with myself, Joe, or Terry Lynn uh, at the office, feel free to give us a call at 705-238-3479 or email us um, at joe at joebladdock.com. Perfect. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Uh, look forward to talking with everyone and uh, glad to be on this video with you today, Sam. Yeah, thanks for joining me, Joe, and have a great day, everybody.